Hi, everybody, and welcome back to yet another cracking edition of the Matt Brown Show. This is the Secrets of Fail series, where we are talking to entrepreneurs all about their epic business blunders. And with us in the hot seat today is the founder and CEO of A Global Resources, and he is none other than uh, David Navarro. David, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Matt. A pleasure to be here with you. Yeah, man, all good. So look, why don't you kick us off with uh, the elevator pitch? Uh, what exactly are you guys up to over there? Agile Global Resources is a technology services firm. We specialize on providing companies with their IT resources that they need. Anything from project managers, a business analyst, uh, full stack developers, we solve their problems with regards to IT challenges. So who are you providing uh, Mexican resources to? Is it any business or do you have a kind of a sweet spot? Okay, any business, anyone that needs an IT solution. My niche is I work with Mexican developers. I help them to get their um, TN visa, working visa for the US, give them the coaching, um, because that's me, right? 30 years ago, I, I came from Mexico and I wish I had someone like me helping me to, to get started. And, and that's part of uh, my value to the world right now. Yeah, it's good to be in a purpose-led business. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Because um, uh, I, I think a lot of us just start businesses because we see a gap and we go there, but actually, it's not actually there's not, there's not really a strong why behind it, you know? Absolutely. And that's, that's, that's my case because for, for 20 something years, I was a global salesman traveling all over the world. I think I mentioned to you, I went around the world twice, visited 40 countries, worked in seven different countries and everything was about getting the sale, you know, closing the deal. But now I enjoy what I do because it's basically mm. transforming the lives of our stakeholders, be it our partners or helping our, our clients with solutions. Mm. Amazing stuff, buddy. Um, all right. Well, look, let's get into the meat and the potatoes of this series. Uh, what is your epic story of fail for our audience around the world today, David? Okay. So the, I guess it was when I started. I, I didn't believe in myself. So I had a partner and our first, our first deal fell apart. And, and I had to, uh, you know, pick it up. And, and so it, I guess the biggest mistake is, is, is trying to do it with others as opposed to believing that you can get it started. And, and so mm -hmm. my, my, my first thing just didn't go well. We lost some money. We lost uh, a client, <laughs> but uh, it was basically a, a, a strategic mistake in the beginning. Mm. So what was the reason for your lack of self-belief? Because I think there's, uh, I think a lot of us have have this imposter syndrome, you know, where we're, we're going to, we're worried we're going to be caught out as a fraud by the world somehow, you know, uh, yes. we don't think we're good enough or whatever. Curious to understand, like, where did your personal sort of lack of belief or whatever that was, um, where did it come about from? Um, I guess I was tired of failing. I, I, I mentioned at the beginning several other businesses. So I was over 50 years old. I didn't have money. I didn't have clients. I had the experience and, and I wanted to, to do something. So this other guy told me, hey, you know, I'll take care of the sales. You take care of the back end. You bring the people and, and we'll make it work. And so I guess it was an easy way to get started, trusting that, you know, somebody else was going to take care of the, the sales. Another mistake as an owner, you have to own it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sales belong to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so true. Hey, so when you think about that whole experience, David, what uh, what do you now take forward with you in, as a kind of a key insight or lesson? Um, it took a couple of years for me to get going. I started doing recruiting to, to try to generate revenue. But I attended, you know, working on your mindset. So that's that's the key thing. Um, in order to build a, an, a building, you need a big, strong foundation. And to build a house, you need a small foundation. So it depends on how you how big you want to grow. Uh, you you need to grow first. And and I think that sounds cliche. And and whenever you hear all the big uh, gurus and and uh, presenters they they talk about that but but it is the truth they they said that because the only way to grow is for you to start growing yourself and i heard tony robin said 
you know, only 50% of the businesses make it in the first five years and only 5% make it to 1 million, mm. well, make sure you're one of the 5%. So that was my goal to become 5% and then now it's 1%. <laughs> yeah, so it's actually true that um, I did some, I had like a small business loans marketplace uh, platform, uh, you know, in a pre one, at one point. And uh, I did some research on the impact of uh, COVID on small business loans, and I found this SBA report. And so basically, you guys are doing like one, one and a half million or whatever. Uh, but um, this report showed the distribution of small businesses by revenue in America. And at the top 10% was based the bottom, like in other words, there's, if you're in the top 10%, you only need to generate a business of a million dollars or more. Mm -hmm. So it, that's the thing, right? You, you know, like if you can get there, you should, and I, cause I was sitting in Africa at the time and I was like, holy shit, my business does like, you know, three times that. So um, I was really proud of having a business in, a, in an emerging market where it's basically fraught with challenges that US entrepreneurs don't even know exist. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, damn, so that's it. That's, that's actually what it is. That's uh, to be in the top 10 of all businesses is a million dollars. Like that's, that should be, a good first goal. Yes, absolutely. And and I remember Bob Proctor used to say, make a million dollars look small. So walk backwards, right? In my case, it was, okay, so I need eight consultants billing $70 an hour for one year and I make a million dollars. So that, that was the goal, right? And then COVID hit. So I went from three consultants to zero consultants. Everybody let go. And, and here's another phrase. You need to build your own economy. So mm -hmm. I, I, I ask God for help, wisdom, and then figure out what am I going to do and pivot, pivot fast. So I told my guys, hey, now we're all working remote. And let's find another job. Two guys decided to quit. So I, I ended up with just one guy. But then I started recruiting remote and lo and behold, you know, we went from 300,000 to 700,000. That was COVID 2020. And then 2021, we did 1.1 million last year, 1.5 million. And now we're at 1.3 million. So yeah. it, it's been an interesting ride. Well, congrats, dude, on, uh, on persevering on that one. Uh, so David, when you think about that experience and if you could get into the Matt Brown show time machine and kind of do something differently, what would you do differently and why? Um, I, for, for, I guess it's starting from th that point of serving. It's, it's trying to get the value out faster instead of just trying to figure out how to make the money. Mm. And so by, me concentrating on helping others to 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 sell them on the dream it was a lot faster money came but it was because i was already helping others and, and, and I, I mentioned to you we have 10 consultants right now and and we're working with 17 more but they're all believers so it, it's like they understand that there's a sacrifice to come and get started in in another country but that's their dream and i'm helping them to get that um, you know, up and running. And so that's, that's the, 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 the thing for me would be to do it faster. It's focus on delivering value and concentrate on doing that as opposed to this is, this is what I need to do with the business, mm. with a, with the consultants. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Tell me, David, what's your advice to other uh, CEOs out there about the importance of failing in becoming successful in business? Um, I mentioned to you, that I've, I've failed in other businesses before this one. And then this one started with a fail. But the biggest thing was um, reading the book, The Way of the Seal from Mark Devine. And at that point, I remember I, I didn't even have money to go get a cup of coffee. But I got the book and, and the difference is making a commitment to make it work. So failure is not an option. You fail. So what are you going to learn? Fail forward fast. And now fast forward five years after that, I actually met Commander Divine in California, paid for a sheepdog training. And it was amazing. I told him, you know, it's like, you're my hero because it was because of that book that got me the right mindset to focus my effort. And, and I think that's the biggest lesson, right? 
people start trying something and then they come back because they fail and then try something else and then they fail and then they fail so they never move forward as opposed to okay you fail instead of going back is what do i need to change in order to keep going and keep Mm -hmm. moving until you finally realize like we all know the success that you were you were looking for yeah it's so funny that and and you you know you don't learn that Uh, you know i find like I, i wish I wish I had that uh, insight when I was younger. You know, just someone like tap you on the shoulder, listen here, pal, this is normal, you know. and Exactly. <laughs> you know, and because you take it personally when a business dies, you know, especially yep. your first one, you know. Um, and uh, I remember that's how it was for me. And I, I'd like, and, and, and you know, it was, it, failure was always shunned upon, you know, 25 years ago. And, and today, <laughs> even on LinkedIn, it's like, well, look how successful everybody is, you know. Um, and so the reason why I did this series, and there's a book coming out, um, um, well, in fact, it's, it was uploaded today to Amazon, but um, but it's all about, <laughs> yeah, thanks, man, but it's all about just make, you know, to your point around having a, a meaning and a purpose behind it, what you do, you know, um, yep. so that you can actually make a tangible difference, because at the moment, it's like, you know, pe- some people just don't think failure is cool some people even like i've you know i automate a lot of stuff with systems and that and i'll reach out to a ceo or an entrepreneur i'm like tell them about the series and then i'll get something like i've never failed it's like, <laughs> Liar. What, what the fuck Liar. are you talking about you know what i mean what do you mean yep. you've never failed um yep. and but you know and they don't get smarter on trying to like reframe what failure is. it's just like i like they genuinely believe they've never failed you know yeah. and it's like yeah. no I- I would tell them what I, what I told my cousin one time we were in the mountain and I said, what are your big goals and were, were you able to achieve them? And, and he said, oh, yeah, I always achieve 100 percent of all my goals. And I said, then you're not you're not aiming high enough. <laughs> and so uh, it, it's it's failure is part of the process. It's a lot sweeter once you've tasted failure. And um, David Goggins has this cookie jar example of, yeah. you know, all the things that you've learned and that's the key lesson you know you have to learn from your mistakes or you're bound to repeat them so failure is only failure if you don't learn from them and 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 i think that's that's what has made the difference my wife supporting me and saying you know honey i'm tired it's like well if you don't try once more we'll never get out of this mess and so finally uh it, it's uh it's it's, it's now a, a a, a big satisfaction that mm-hmm. after so many failures, mm-hmm. uh, I'm, I'm able to be in a position where I can help others and encourage them. You know, it's like so, entrepreneurship is not for everybody, but for the guys that are willing to go the distance, the one number, the number one thing is never give up. You know, once you once you put on a, a destination, is like you have to persevere yeah. until you finally get there. Do you know that there's a? It's actually proven through research that most most entrepreneurs actually have uh, or generate true wealth in their fifties. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> yeah, well, because it's like you have to go through this process of becoming. You know, you have to generate like a wealth of knowledge and experience so that you can actually build the sort of business that you're looking for, whatever that is for you. Right. Right. Yeah. What about books, tools, and resources that you recommend? I know you mentioned the way of the seal, but are there, are there other like podcasts, other tools, shows, things like that? Yes, um, I always talk about the the U square, and and this guy Pritchett has a like a series of a lot of uh, different things. He talks about uh, making a quantum leap. That helped me a lot when it was twenty twenty, and and um, the the video from the classic from Earl Nightingale, the strangest secret. I listened to that video like 700 times at least because it was I was walking in the morning and in the afternoon and I listened to it once at least once and then during that was COVID lasted for more than a year so basically um, every single day I was listening to it listening to it and and that was like brainwashing myself but it's 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 the truth right we become what we think about making your own economy is all about Okay, the circumstances may be this, but what if if I think differently? If I st- st- like Tony Robbins said, right? If, what, I got to make sure that I'm part of the five percent or the one percent. So I to to do that, you need to think differently and ask God for wisdom and then execute. <laughs> so true, hey, so true. 
Well, look, uh, David, thanks so much for coming on the show, dude. That does um, conclude your time in the hot seats. Congrats on persevering yeah. and uh, building a successful business. Congrats. Top 10%, baby. All day. Uh, so, awesome. um, and you know, obviously, uh, you know, better things always come in the future if you keep hustling. And I do believe that, um, you know, true success can come at any moment if you just persevere. So, um, Absolutely. thanks for coming on the show, David. Good to be here. Thank you. Anybody else or well, everybody else really <laughs> see you again <laughs> soon. Ciao.